Okay, hello everybody. My name is Jay Oza. Let me welcome you to Speech Talk Live. This is episode number two. And the purpose of this Speech Talk Live is for us to discuss public speaking, some of the problems and issues that many of us are experiencing. This is your opportunity for us to get together and talk about it and how we can uh, overcome some of the problems that we might be experiencing. And then also, it also gives us an opportunity to evaluate a, a sp speech given by one of our members. And the third segment we typically do use is to evaluate a public speech that has been recently given and see what that speaker did well and what we can learn from that public speech. So at this point, uh, uh, I am a mentor for the Introduction to Public Speaking course uh, at Coursera, the on-demand platform. And also I uh, work as a small, uh, uh, I have my small business uh, called Fightool Group and uh, I help uh, startups uh, uh, driving sales. And lastly, I consider myself a student because I am also learning. So public speaking is hard and I think that uh, I'm constantly in that learning mode till uh, I guess the the day I die. So at this point, let me go and uh, go around and uh, have others introduce themselves. So uh, Latish, you want to introduce yourself? Thanks, Jay. Uh, hi, Soumyan. Uh, yes. Um, so I am uh, Latish Balakrishnan, and um, I'm based out from Kochi. Um, this is in the state of Kerala in India. And um, I have got uh, more than uh, 10 years experience working in the IT industry, that's the information technology field. And um, I've been uh, uh, giving programs, uh, trainings, etc., for my team. But um, uh, I want to gradually uh, you know, change it to um, an international audience. So uh, the purpose of joining this particular uh, sessions and activities is to get a broader idea about uh, how to interact, how to you know introduce concepts which are relatively new, and um, you know get a buy-in from the audience, like uh, how the way I'm expressing myself, the the communication, the flow, the thought process, etc. That's what something that I need to uh, I improvise and learn. So um, yeah, that's that's the purpose of uh, joining this particular uh, activity here. And thanks, Jay, you're doing a great job and. Uh, I, I guess um, uh, this is the first time actually I'm uh, getting into this particular uh, uh, event. So uh, I, I hope that there will be more uh, uh, participants uh, joining us, uh, you know, for this. So it will be like much, much uh, uh, value adding as well. <coughs> thanks, thanks, Latis. See, just by watching, I just forgot one thing. I didn't tell them where I'm from. <laughs> so I'm from uh, Hazlitt, New Jersey. That's about uh, 40 miles from New York City. So you see, sometimes just <laughs> watching each other, we can learn uh, something. Uh, the one thing I'd like to say is that we like to keep this small because when you have too many people, it the, the format just doesn't allow it to work well. So. Uh, I think at most we could probably handle two to three more people, but then once it gets too many, it just the format just doesn't work well. So I just wanted to, <laughs> to let people know that this is a very selective thing because uh, uh, the Google Hangout, we've tried it when we have too many people going back and forth. The, the format just doesn't allow itself to have more than uh, four to five people. We'll see. If there, is a, if there are people with good broadband access, maybe we can do it. Uh, Samin, you want to introduce yourself? Samin, you're next. Uh, unmute your unmute your phone. Unmute your mic. <clears throat> he might be having some uh, audio difficulty. Samin, you're still muted. Okay, I think uh, he's having. This is a, this is one of the reasons why. <laughs> Some mean you have to unmute your unmute your phone, unmute your mic. Okay. Eventually, normally I think he might not be able to get the the audio. 
because he's usually uh, he's from Bangalore. Sometimes he has uh, a, a difficulty with the connection. So I mean, I can can you hear us? Can you like unmute your phone so that we can uh, unmute your mic? He's talking, but we're not able to hear him. Yeah, he is talking, but yeah, I think he's not aware that his uh, mic is on mute. Uh, yeah, but he should. Be I able did to... uh, the chat. I think it's in the group chat. Yeah, right, right. But he should be able to hear us. I don't know. It looks like his audio is not working either. All right, so, so Latish, you and I just will talk while he figures this out. So, <laughs> so these are some of the things you're learning <laughs> when you do this format. You know, you you. Uh, uh, so, I mean, you're gonna have to. Uh, we still can't hear you. You're still muted. Okay, so eventually he will figure out how to unmute his mic, and then uh, then we can uh, get started. Since he was going to start the first segment of this uh, talk. Okay, so uh, let's see. While he's figuring it out, so uh, have you gone through this uh, intro to public speaking, uh, the on-demand, the course that's uh, that's on the Coursera platform? Uh, I had joined uh, Jay uh, about a year back. Uh, I had gone through the uh, course. I couldn't complete the entire program, uh, but I did complete uh, some modules. Uh, the early three or four modules, um, I could go through it and uh, uh, complete them, but uh, I, I just couldn't finish the course. And that's something that I, I want to do it maybe going ahead after a few weeks. Probably I'll do that. Right. A actually, it's a very, t it, it, you know, the course is easy in one sense because the videos are easy to view and you can view them, right? Uh, this particular uh, the G Plus community that uh, that I've been the, the lead mentor for, it started out with uh, close to 400, I think there are 400 members, right? As of now, I don't think anybody has finished this course. So, so it just goes to show that this course uh, and these are 400 people who really wanted to work on improving their public uh, speaking skills. And what what happens is that that once you start recording these speeches, it's a lot of work. They really get overwhelmed, and that's why we created this forum so to get people to start talking about it and kind of motivate them to go and uh, and and eventually you, you know record their impromptu speech, the informative speech, and the and the persuasive speech. So. Uh, yeah, I, I do highly recommend that uh, when you get a chance to just go through and finish the course, because then you'll find this forum sure. even more more useful. Because there are a lot of uh, basic stuff that uh, that you do need to uh, you do need to go through. Uh, so I mean, oh, okay, so I mean, you finally you finally figured it out. Okay. What happened was somehow suddenly the you know I. Uh, there was another uh, parallel channel that was coming through because I had turned the YouTube channel on. So that was coming with a delay. So I went to turn it off. When I went to turn it off, the whole thing went off and I was not able to get back in. I was able to hear all of uh, both of you talking, but then I was not, uh, whatever I was saying was not getting back to you. No, my, my voice was not reaching you. Okay, anyway, it's okay. So, I so in, uh, just introduce yourself and then we'll take a brief pause and I'll introduce the next segment, okay? okay. Let, me, let me start introducing myself also over again. Well, my name is Somyan. I'm based in Bangalore. I'm a retired corporate executive. I worked in uh, the IT industry and uh, I retired from Honeywell Technology Solutions Bangalore in 2008. Ever since I've been doing various uh, kinds of, uh, uh, you know, uh, consultancy assignments, I'm, I'm a freelance consultant right now. I have done a lot of courses in Coursera and uh, one of my favorite topics was, uh, you know, process mining, which I completed about a month back. And now currently I'm very actively pursuing the uh, task of uh, promoting a society for promotion of cross mining in India. Okay, so based on the some of the participants in the course, I have been trying to build that and we, we are trying to build a community around that and create a society. So that's the preoccupation I, I have got other than, you know, uh, being uh, a mentor in this course, uh, uh, you know, public speaking course and so on and so forth. So that's my uh, background. But, okay, great. Uh, <clears throat> Okay, so I'm going to take a brief pause and then I'll come in and, and introduce the next segment, okay? Okay. Okay, again, this is uh, Jay Oza 
and this is Speech Talk Live, episode number two. In the next segment, we're going to focus on a problem that a lot of students run into when it comes to public speaking. How do you get started? They get overwhelmed very quickly when they start working on their speech and eventually they give up. So for this segment, I've asked uh, Somyan to lead the segment and he's going to talk about how he does it. And then we can kind of give our input uh, on what are some of the tips and techniques we use. And again, until you get started, you can't finish it. So Samyan, I'm going to turn it over to you and you can tell us uh, how do you do it. Thank you, Jay. Uh, fine. Uh, my primary objective is to narrate the way I went about creating my uh, impromptu speech. Professor McGarity had already given something like 32 topics, stock subjects to talk about. I had picked up one of them. The topic says, computers are the most important technological innovations of the 20th century. So I am required to speak either for or against it and provide substantiate it with my points of view. On the face of it, I took a hypothetical, I, I, I formed a hypothesis, yes, I want to agree with this and that's what my you know, speech will be about. But notwithstanding that, since this is a speech related to logic, in an impromptu speech, we are focused on logic and the logic has to come out. So that's the primary objective. So I went about collecting some kind of evidence and things that also. So now what I'm going to narrate is how I went about doing that. The reason I picked up this subject again is because I worked in the computer industry and I spent nearly 50% of my, uh, you know, of the uh, 20th century, I perhaps I have lived through. And then, uh, you know, uh, I also have worked both with computers and without computers. When I joined my first job in uh, 1969, we didn't have uh, even a, a calculator, pocket calculator, you know. We had to use, at, in ISRO, Indian Space Research Organization, we were using hand-cranked mechanical calculators, and that's the way we were doing, working. It's only in the post-PC era that the computing power has come to the individual, but earlier, it was not there. I could access a mainframe computer if necessary, but for a day-to-day -day simple operation, there was no computing resource available. Hence, I felt that I lived through that, and I'm able to relate to that subject, and hence, I'll be able to uh, explain uh, my point of view better. So that's why I chose that. Now, let me plunge into the topic itself. Now, this is a statement. It is not a question. Normally, all uh, speech will be a response to your question, but normally we structure it as a hypothesis and say whether you agree with the hypothesis or you know you don't agree with the hypothesis so that kind of a thing it's never posed as a question we could always have said which is the most important technological innovation invention of the 20th century but we say computers are the most important technological innovation of the 20th century and now speak for or against so that's the way the speech topics are created okay now i want to investigate this now this statement is something I, I I first one of my early activities is to take that sentence itself and analyze it a little. I try to get into a little bit of semantics of that. I also try to look at the context based constraints. Context gives us the boundary conditions, some of the limitations, etc. So I look at the context, and I also try to understand each and every word and how they relate. Now, otherwise, you know, I may be building a speech with some misunderstanding and building a building in the next plot. Then I'm a neighbor's plot. I don't want to do that. I want to clearly understand what is my own topic and focus on it. So that's why I want to do the semantic analysis. Now, looking at the context, I said context analysis is another thing I do. Looking at the context, all speech related uh, you know, uh, statements we have are all valid for a certain context. Most of them will not be universally applicable in all situations. They will all have some, have some kind of a validity of a certain context. So I need to understand the context to which we, are, we have to restrain ourselves. For example, the current topic, which is the most important uh, you know, uh, innovation of the, uh, of the 20th century, if you don't have that uh, context, the, the time-related context, 20th century, 
if you uh, open it out for, for all times to come, I may be wondering whether the wheel which was invented in 3500 BC is the most important uh, invention in the whole of uh, lifetime of mankind. And maybe you can even say uh, the, uh, you know, the printing press of uh, Gutenberg, which was uh, actually invented in 1500 uh, AD, well, that is uh, the most important innovation, invention. But then we are given a statement saying it is related to 20th century. So those kind of a constraints, uh, context are, are, are important. We need to define it within that scope. So that gives us a scope. Now, the next thing is, this is a declarative statement. A is adjective B. That's the way the, in context C. That's the way the whole statement is. In context C, I have already addressed. A is adjective B. This is the, uh, the point. So B is a set of all inventions. A is computer, which is one of the inventions. Now A is part of B. And it has got a qualifying adjective, which says most important. So now I am trying to um, uh, look at these kind of things as semantic analysis. So what I have to do is I have to say A and non-A. The non-A is another set. So I have to say the non-A is one set, A is one set, and the characteristic on which I am comparing these two sets is importance. So when I am trying to say importance, I again get into a little bit semantics of the word importance itself. What is importance? When I look at that, importance is the characteristic of possessing some great value, significant value, or leading to the consequences of significant value. So this is the way importance is defined. So I should say the thing I have chosen, the technology I have chosen to uh, uh, support is by itself giving significant value. Or I should say this has led to a lot of consequences, other inventions, etc., which were enabled by this or which were, uh, which followed this. And all the values generated by this also were actually enabled by the this invention. So that's the way I'm trying to build up the value proposition. So if I can say this is the way the value was and I'm able to compare this and say this added greatest value, then I have, uh, you know, highlighted the importance of it. So that's the way the semantics part of it tells me I should be able to conclude. So this is uh, one uh, kind of uh, outlook. Next, I, uh, uh, I need to see after I have done this, I have A, I have non-A. I need to know what this non-A are. That is what the non-computer oriented inventions are. What I did was I went to the Google and uh, you know, Google to find out what are the most important inventions of the 21st century, 20th century. There are some top three search items I took and they talk, talked of one website, talked of 10 important uh, inventions, another talked of 20, another talked of 30. I went through all of them. So when I looked at all these three, it was obvious that they were all you know, having a lot of overlap and uh, the most important things were all very clear and obvious. I picked up about uh, the 10 of those uh, top items and then started comparing them individually. When I did that, what I found was practically every one of them, either in its initial stage itself, it was built on a computer or if it was uh, uh, somewhat independent, its later avatars you know, or, or the modern versions of them, They've all been significantly enhanced by a computer or built on computer. So this is what I found. Okay. So um, the for, for example, you take nuclear energy. Nuclear energy is one of the greatest inventions of the previous uh, century. But then the development of nuclear energy, the simulation and things that went into saying how we can harness that, definitely involved computer-based simulation. Similarly, if you look at a power plant, modern nuclear power plant. It's a control and, uh, and things like that. They're built on automation control systems of uh, which are based on computers. You take aircrafts, maybe uh, the aircraft built by Wright brothers in the very early days, that, was, that can be uh, called as a, something which was independent from uh, you know, uh, computers. But then the modern aircrafts, we cannot look at a modern aircraft, uh, you know, we cannot think of it without computers. If you take the computational fluid dynamics that goes into, uh, analysis that goes into streamlining the body of it, that is involving computers. If you look at the CAD programs with each of the parts are designed, so you know they will have the uh, minimum weight for maximum strength, that is based on computers. And if you look at the avionics and other control systems, which let the aircraft fly by wire or uh, safely operate, that is also based on computers. So like this, if you look at it, many of these facets are either based on a computer or 
were extensions which were enabled by the use of a computer. So I'm, with, with this kind of a definition, I concluded that all the value generated by these other innovations were also actually going and adding to the value uh, provided by the uh, basic computer itself. And hence the computer is the more valuable uh, you know, uh, invention of all the inventions that we are talking about. Now, I also needed to go back and you know, uh, state what is the basic intrinsic value that a computer gives. Okay, computers are pretty good logic processing unit. And as, a, uh, as such, it can do a lot of computation, millions of computations in a jiffy without error. Whereas humans typically have a great about a problem. We are all fatigue prone. We make uh, mistakes. We have to repeatedly do the computation to be uh, confident. And then we are very slow. So I can illustrate this. You know, in my days, I, I was telling you that in my early days, I used to do some hand cranking with uh, uh, adding patients to do computation. So in those days, we, I did make a spreadsheet, pencil and paper spreadsheet. I had to do this hand cranking with the calculator and you know, find out numbers, compute them. If I add them, I have to add two, three times to make sure that I have not made an error. So I had to build a spreadsheet by manual means and use very, very primitive tools in order to do the computation and it took a long time. And if somebody wanted to come and make a change in that, in the spreadsheet, saying that why don't you change some value in the top line, we would resist and we will sort of discourage them from making any changes. Okay, so that's the way we were able to operate with the computers, I mean, with the spreadsheet in the early days. Compared to that, at a later stage, before my retirement, in one of the organizations I worked for, I had, uh, you know, uh, helped them to build a finance model. In this finance model, multiple spreadsheets were created, thousands of fields were filled, you know, that they were all filled with formulae. So people could actually change one numbers. A sales person can change, uh, you know, sales price, or he can change the sales quantity. A manufacturing person can talk of productivity, or he can change, uh, you know, uh, uh, new employees introduction and related productivity difference. So all these kind of things could be done, and they were all able to simulate and see the results. Now, I was able to go and encourage them, please go play with it. And they were able to come and make all the changes that they, they, I mean, uh, they were capable of, and they were feeling confident because they could play out all the what if scenarios and feel more confident. So this is the way they were able to, uh, you know, build their uh, confidence and uh, give a more robust model. So this is the kind of productivity difference. The productivity difference actually goes to uh, goes as a multiplier to the value that uh, humans are able to generate. So now. With all this kind of analysis, I was now confident. I was now able to say, look, yes, I agree with this statement. Computers are the most important uh, technological innovation of the 20th century. It is because number one, it is able to increase human productivity. And number two, if I compare all other technological innovations of the same period, I am able to find that computers have either been the basis for the other inventions or they have been contributing to influencing significant technological improvements in those innovations, in those inventions. So because they were either the base or they have influenced their improvement, they have added much more value than any other invention. So this is the kind of a conclusion I was able to draw. So in all this uh, uh, logic, I was able to use, uh, you know, a, a precise meaning and think like because I had gone ahead and analyzed each and every word. The analysis of the word important was uh, one of my uh, key factors. That is the one which enabled me to build the argument in a particular way. So semantic analysis, situation or context analysis, and uh, you know, uh, and things that are important. I also used Venn diagrams to visualize this for my own internal clarity. You look at computers as one element and all other things as another element and form this as sets, etc. And in fact, Venn diagram is a kind of a semantic analysis when you come to logic. Logic is analyzed using Venn diagrams. So that's the way the whole thing is. There is also one other, uh, you know, subject called in mathematical thinking, which is one of the courses I attended in Coursera. There is also this idea of symbolic mathematics, where you can express all English statements in mathematical expressions. Right. And using those mathematical expressions, one can even arrive at very robust logical conclusions. So that again emphasizes for me that something like semantic analysis is a very important tool for building arguments. So this was my uh, approach to building my uh, uh, initial speech. Right. Okay. So that's good. <clears throat> yeah. So some, so I mean, I have a, a few few questions. That 
So what you just described was your particular method of putting the speech together. <clears throat> but let's say if I'm an audience, okay, I what you just expressed is very technical on how you went about it. <clears throat> what would be your main idea? Like let's say if I if I'm crafting a speech and if I want to take it from top down, what is the main idea you want your audience to take away? And in like one sentence, what is the main idea of what you're what you're trying to convey? Yeah, in an impromptu speech, the main idea is always the logic, and we should not perhaps expect anything more than simple common sense on the part of the audience to accept our uh, flow of our argument, etc. We should be able to present our argument and say, look, this is what I found. This is point A, this is point B, and these two things work together to establish my uh, premise. Okay, my premise is computers are the most important uh, inventor. Why do I say that? Because computers add very high value, productivity, and the uh, second point is, I'm, the, my statement is something which is comparative. I have to look at all other inventions and compare, I mean, when I compare them, I find that my choice is actually going and uh, enabling all the other technologies as well. And hence, the value generated by this technology is higher. So I'm trying to establish that the value generated by computer as a technology is much higher than the value generated by any other technology. There are two dimensions to it. One is its own intrinsic contribution. Another is it is also able to appropriate the contribution made by all other derivative technologies or uh, uh, extended technologies. So that's the logic. Right. So, so th th there is some, uh, and Latish, you can you can uh, step because I think this applies to something you said earlier. So, in in your case, uh, Somian, you're giving a, an impromptu speech, which is pretty to a general audience, right? So, what are you yes. expecting your audience to know? Because that's very important, right? Because if your audience is not in the same wavelength as you are, then you're going to lose them right from the beginning. So okay. what are you assuming that your audience knows? Because in, in some cases, I've given speeches, and the feedback I got is that audience didn't know anything. And I, I've, I, I, then I, obviously, with the, this Coursera platform, the audience could be just about anybody. But in your case, you have to make some kind of an assumption on how much your audience knows. So is your assumption that they either know how to use a computer, that they're assuming that they are using computer in their daily life? Is that the assumption you're making? Absolutely. In fact, uh, the, uh, the 32 topics which uh, Professor Magariti had chosen, were all chosen to uh, give some kind of commonality on people who come to attend this uh, uh, public speaking course. Most of the you know topics he had chosen were related to speaking in a general sense, or I mean communication in a general sense, or they were related to uh, MOOC as a specific topic, or they were related to computers as another topic. Because he felt that okay, those who come to attend this course are likely to be familiar with computers. Those who come to attend this course are going to be interested in communication, or those who are coming into this MOOC uh, know about MOOC as a concept. So these were the three themes under which you know all these 30 topics he had listed. So in fact, this becomes one of the difficulties. We need to normally know our audience and their interest and their ability to understand. In fact, somebody in the discussion forum also talked about uh, the audience being uh, kind of impromptu. In the sense, the impromptu really means that without preparation. Okay. So if you say that the audience is also unprepared to take something which is technically a little heavy, we need to be able to communicate that to them. But then what I was narrating, it becomes a, becomes a little more technical because I'm trying to describe my logic of bringing that argument, uh, main points of the argument. If I uh, simply look at what I'm going to be communicating to the uh, users, that is going to be perhaps only the result. Okay, so how did I decide this? How did I choose this uh, uh, line? How did I uh, you know, um, uh, structure my uh, thought process? If I do semantic analysis, I'm never going to be talking about semantic analysis to the audience in reality. Uh, but I'm going to be sure that I'm using a precise word and I'm going to not uh, you know, uh, make a mismatch between the words I have used and what they may be able to understand. I'll be very careful about that. But since this introduction to you was about how I went about building it, I went a little technical. Otherwise, you know, the, the, whatever I'm trying to describe will be 
just impossible for uh, you know uh, uh, a general audience to understand. I, I, since uh, you know our friend Latish also is a, a, a technical guy, I, I'm sure that uh, you know he'll be able to understand it. But uh, you know uh, many of our uh, uh, fellow students in uh, in the co uh, in the Coursera platform. Uh, are all coming from different uh, uh, professional lives. There are many people who are teachers, many people are uh, journalists, and many, many people are in different walks of life. Okay, so it may not be easy for all of them to follow, but in this particular uh, instance, to say how I thought about, I'm actually narrating the way I thought about. That's mm -hmm. what it is. Right. So, yeah. Latish, uh, you, you're going to be working on your speech. Uh, have you given any thought that the speech you're going to be giving, I think, is on June 12th? Have you given thought as far as you, you kind of mentioned that your audience is very technical? How much do you know about your audience? Have you given a lot of thought to that? Uh, yes, uh, yes, Jay. Um, the audience is like um, uh, very much um, on the leadership side, and it also involves uh, uh, the uh, people who are like less than a years experience as well. So it ranges from uh, very experienced to almost um, uh, less than six months kind of an experience as well. So um, looking at that, I need to scale myself initially to uh, the start level, like given giving the basics of the, the concepts, and then gradually build it to a level wherein like uh, they are able to, everybody is able to appreciate like what's actually the process and how is it going to benefit uh, any other program. So um, that way I'm planning, I already created a, a presentation, a deck has been created. Uh, it's all about, uh, you know, uh, probably as you mentioned earlier, I'll I'll try to capture myself a small clip about uh, me introducing the concept for about say 15 20 minutes and then I'll share with the group uh, uh, and then uh, whatever is the feedback I'll uh, incorporate and improvise and uh, yeah I I think that that would really help me for the big uh, in a session on 12th um writing to um, yeah go ahead yeah sorry yeah, uh, I, I actually wanted to also uh, talk about uh, uh, Saumian's uh, concept today. I mean, is it something that we do it in the flow, Jay, or uh, is it? Uh, I'm, I'm new to this uh, 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 this particular. Act, so. Yeah, no. What, what what he described is his methodology. You you kind of that's why we're all part part of the students. You have to develop your own methodology that's going to work for you. Everybody has different methodology. Uh, and I like that the reason why uh, in, in public speaking is a little tricky okay you really have to focus on the it's not it doesn't matter how much you know it's irrelevant it's how much the audience ends up knowing after you give a speech is what matters so you have to keep putting yourself into the audience's shoes like what is your overall objective in giving this speech at the end, the audience is going to probably going to judge you. I'm taking audience as an as a whole, whether they liked the speech or they didn't like the speech. And second is, what is the main idea of your speech? If they cannot, after you give a speech, if somebody cannot tell them what the, tell you what the main idea of the speech was, then you did not do a good job in conveying that. So everything has to come down to that. What is the main idea? And everything that you use within the speech has to support that in some ways. And you may have to repeat it because the audience is going to remember they're hearing it only for the one time. You've been working on it for quite a bit of time. So you know a lot more than they do. So the biggest mistake that people make is that they don't look at the audience as somebody who is most likely not going to remember everything that you have worked on. You may put in like a week of effort, okay? Audience may, or audience is going to hear it only once, and it's your responsibility to make sure that they leave with the main takeaway that you have. And you may have to feed it to them incrementally so they get it. So you may have to use techniques like using a story about your personal experience at work, how and these are different techniques that you, you can use to make sure that they understand what you're talking about. Because you'll find that most people will not get much out of any speech that people... The reason we know some of the famous speeches is because we've heard them repeatedly. We keep hearing them over and over again, like Martin Luther King and others. But if you ever listen to a speech, you really are going to understand... The thing that you're going to take away is the story that they're telling. That's the part you're going to remember. That's what, you know... Uh, appeals to human beings, not the, the, the technical details that you're 
you, you're conveying. Uh, Asamian, any any thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think in the discussion forum also we had uh, one uh, such a discussion. Uh, one of the challenges uh, we will have is when uh, the audience is mixed, like uh, Latish was now mentioning there are uh, very experienced people and there are also uh, lady novices. So then it becomes a very challenging thing in the sense, if you try to fly low to reach out to the uh, novices, the uh, experienced people are perhaps going to find it uh, boring because they know all those things. And if you try to fly to their uh, altitude and you know, uh, try to you know um, uh, talk about it, these guys are just not going to make any uh, sense of it, and you know they may be lost out. So it's always a challenge to address a, um, a audience which has got a great mixture in terms of uh, their comprehending capability, and I think that becomes one of the challenges. So if we otherwise know it, then we can uh, you know build our uh, expressions and our cliches and things like that, which can be understood by a certain level of people. So that way, you know, the uh, the thing can be simplified or made a little more complex. So uh, I, I think uh, uh, to understand the composition of the audience and what they can take is very important to, uh, you know, structure our uh, uh, expressions. Right. But the main thing, uh, uh, Latish, when you're working on it, keep it simple. Sure, sure. Yes. Don't, 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 if you're saying something that's too difficult to understand, so like let's say you're talking to me and uh, your main idea it was something about stage gating or something I think you said. Yes. E even though e the audience, don't assume <laughs> that audience knows what you're talking about, okay? <laughs> because they don't. So even though it might sound that you're kind of dumbing it down, if I have to give one tip whether to err on that, I would say yes, err on that, even though it sounds like, because there may be some people that are, who could be very technical, because remember, in any given speech, it's sort of like some people are going to like it, some people are not going to like it, and others don't care, okay? So use your common sense idea like, okay, if I give, if I'm communicating, are they, what are they, are they able to understand what I'm saying, and, and just if you think there's something that could be misunderstood, just shorten the sentences out, repeat it again, and make sure they get it. You may have to repeat certain things because don't assume that the audience will get everything you're saying. So these are the kind of things that uh, you will learn from, and we're all learning, okay? We're all learning from experience because at the end, a, a speech has to hit its mark with the audience and you can't hit that mark all the time it's it's really hard all you can do is do the best you can in in including a story that they can remember use different body gestures show some enthusiasm why this is so important if you think something is important for them to know then let them know why this is important don't just say it and then just move on to the next topic and just say, look, this is a very important thing to know. Like, these are the three things you got to know. And at the end, it's always a good idea to, I don't know if you, you, you can do that, just give them the takeaways, that these are the key takeaways from this speech. Or you can ask them, so, you know, what are the key takeaways did you get from this speech? Or you can do that if you feel comfortable doing, if you think you have enough confidence to do that. Like, you know, what are some of the key takeaways that you got from the speech? And the audience likes that a little bit, like, okay, I got this out of it, I got this out of it. Uh, but otherwise, you just tell them that these are the key takeaways. And uh, the, the, the main thing is the more relaxed you are in giving the speech, the audience will feel it. So that's why you need to make sure that you are well rehearsed because if you look, uh, you'll be nervous. That's okay. That's natural. But the main thing is that if you look like you're enjoying giving that talk, then they will enjoy it too. Yeah, that, that's great. That, that's yeah, so like right now, you know, you're smiling and having fun. That's how you should be giving the talk. <laughs> and, 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 and another thing I'll tell you is this, another tip, uh, and this is helpful that you joined us today because otherwise Somian and I would be just uh, <laughs> talking about stuff uh, because this gives us an opportunity to educate others who are watching it. You should be having fun like you're having fun talking to us. I don't know whether you are or not, but I'm assuming you are because the yes. thing is that if you are in a conversational mode, you, you, you right now you're in a conversational mode with us right you're talking to us and you're having fun you're smiling that's the way you should be giving a speech if you become stiff and not enjoying it then the audience will 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 capture a lot from your body language than what you're saying 
So be careful about the, the toughest part in public speaking is integrating your, your voice and your body language with what you're saying. And what they really get is more from what your body language is telling them. So be very careful on how you use your body. You don't want to like move around, show some nervousness by you know, you know, shifting weight left and right or rocking back and forth or moving your head this way, that way. Uh, that's why this uh, 15 to 20 minute recording, record it like we don't know the subject, okay? Shit. The 15 minute that we asked you to record, record it like we don't know the subject. So it's your responsibility to explain it to us. Even though we're technical, but I want you to just take this opportunity to take this topic and explain it as best as you can for people who may not be that familiar, or even if we are familiar, it doesn't help to re-level uh, set it with us. Sure. Right? I, so I mean, I, you have I, any, yeah, go ahead. Uh, so, I mean, you have any uh, comments before we move on to the, the next topic? Yeah, I, I think it's, everything is fine. We can move on to the next topic. Okay, so the, the next topic I wanted to cover uh, with Wendy, but she's not joined us. Uh, is she had uh, recorded this. Uh, Shlomin, did you get a chance to view her video? Oh, he's, he has to. You, you have to unmute it. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, I have uh, viewed it earlier too, and uh, once again today I viewed that. Uh, in, in fact, uh, the first time I uh, heard a speech, I also went to Wikipedia and uh, read an article on uh, her problem. She has a handicap, uh, it's uh, called spina bifida, and there are uh, three levels of uh, spina bifida, and she has got the most severe of the types. And uh, it's something apparently which uh, happened. Uh, when she was, uh, before she was born, uh, as a uh, uh, fortis, she had the, the problem. Uh, the spinal cord, the bones which fuse at the bottom, apparently somewhere that the joint doesn't form. And then, you know, uh, sometimes uh, the spinal cord uh, can come out through that, bulge through that, and that could cause a, a severe amount of problem. Uh, such people uh, find a lot of difficulty in uh, uh, moving around. Where they need to use crutches or wheelchairs. And even then, you know, they can have other kind of complications. And, uh, you know, that uh, she was uh, narrating those kind of difficulties that are associated with that. She was giving a fairly good, uh, um, you know, description of what this uh, ailment is about, why, when does it form, and, uh, you know, what are the kind of difficulties that uh, it causes to the patient. Okay, so what I read in Wikipedia was uh, more or less, you know, I uh, was uh, 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 telling with what she was saying. And from that, what I understand is she had the most severe form of the spin of uh, um, bifida. Okay, All right. So, so, so I, uh, I I watched that uh, video. I think she does a, a, a an excellent job in that video. She really captures uh, uh, her her uh, handicap, as you mentioned it, uh, spina bifida, which I did not know much about. So after, and she kind of gives you all aspect of it, right, from how it somebody's born, it's a congenital thing you're born with, and then how she uh, explains all the different parts. It's, it's an informative speech, uh, and I think she does a fantastic job. Uh, I don't know whether that was for a class or this was something she had put out uh, separately from the class. So that is, that's one of the questions I wanted to ask her, because technically she's giving a speech, but it's, it's edited. She edits the speech in a way that she tells you each of the points about spina bifida. Like spina bifida is something, like she starts out with this, uh, with kind of like a little humor she injects into her speech where she says, uh, if you're familiar with this game called Name That Tune, where people name the tune based on the number of tunes that you hear. So I thought that was very effective in how she started her speech. And then what she does that was really interesting in this recording was, and again, this is a, since she's not here, so I have to basically make this assumption, is the way she uses silence in this, in this uh, recording. So she'll say a statement about spina bifida, and then she will pan, the camera will pan to the window or something like that, right, a chair or something. And in, in, when I first watched it, I was like, wait a second, this is not really a speech. What, what is actually she's doing? But then it occurred to me is that it could have been done for an effect that she wants you to think about it. 
So she'll say something about spina bifida, and then the camera will pan, and there'll be a silence. Then again, camera will come back to her face, and then she'll make another statement, uh, give you more information about spina bifida. And again, the camera will pan to the window or something. And then again, she keeps doing. So she uses this technique which is fine when you are doing a, a recording. I'm not sure how you could do that if you're giving a live a speech in front of an audience. So that was one of the questions that I had for her, that this, would, this is very effective as a recording, but if you were giving it as a live speech, how would you have done it? So we don't get that. When you're evaluating it, you're kind of evaluating the video more than the speech. So that's one of my takeaway from that. Uh, the the other thing is it's she really does a fantastic job in explaining this particular uh, uh, handicap that many people suffered through. I think she does an excellent job in in explaining it. the 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 one thing that I wish she had done, and some mean correct me if I if I didn't if maybe I didn't capture this. I I think it would have been more effective at the end after she had described all of this stuff. On, even though you can see her that she's 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 basically has overcome not overcome it she's coping with it and all that, but to say look I have this but my life goes on I can do so many things that uh, that that make me a very productive citizen, I think if she had added that part to it, then it would have I think would have made the speech even better that here's the here's my problem but guess what hey we all have problems and look I'm coping with it and I'm actually doing a lot of stuff out there I'm even recording this video so I am very productive you don't need to feel sorry for me hey you know we all have our problems I think that would have really I was kinda of hoping that that how she ended it but it doesn't end like that so th that's the only minor point I have that that there was a certain element in that speech that could have taken it to even the higher level than it is at this point Yeah, I I uh, I also noticed that uh, that applause that happens, but I thought that maybe she has uh, uh, it's a uh, it's a difficulty she has got it's uh, some kind of a limitation she has got in terms of uh, uh, how much uh, uh, continuous speaking she could uh, hold. But then I think she has also been participating in another event which Julie has been conducting. Uh, we have uh, yeah Saturday uh, evening event. Uh, Google Hangout in a similar way, where uh, you know we read out uh, from a book. We take turns and read uh, uh, maybe two, three pages from a book uh, called "Such Inside Yourself." Okay, uh, I think she participates in that as well. But in that uh, event, I think she is able to fluently and continuously uh, read out. Okay, so that that's uh, what I have uh, seen. Uh, but I, in fact, I am perplexed with uh, uh, this uh, pause, etc., that happens. Uh, this recording has been uh, done many, uh, many, many weeks earlier. Uh, I think I have seen it on YouTube itself, and it was uh, done quite a uh, long time ago. Uh, maybe it was uh, her, one of her initial uh, trial recordings and things like that, and she has uh, gained more control on uh, uh, ability to deliver a continuous uh, talk ever since. So that's my thought. I am not sure. Yeah, yeah, it was, uh, I checked it, it was recorded on April 14, 2011, so it's more than four years ago, and she yeah. has already close to 721 views. Uh, so, Latisha, if you get a chance, take a look at it. She does a very good job in, uh, in, in recording this, uh, uh, this, this video that we're, we're, we're talking about. In fact, she was supposed to be on, I don't know what happened, and she was going to discuss it and some of the choices she made, and that would have been helpful uh, because she really appears very confident, okay, in the talk. She doesn't, like, make you feel like, it's not a, like a pity thing, like, hey, look, I'm in bad shape. She really explains it to you, and she's like, in fact, if you watch it, you feel like, my God, this lady, she's done an amazing thing. You know, I can't relate to it. I mean, I have a back problem that I can relate to. <laughs> that, you know, that, that, so, but in her, my, when I, when I watch it, I mean, my problem is nothing compared to what, uh, you know, she has overcome her, uh, uh, her handicap and how she's able to uh, manage it and, uh, and lead a very productive life. So I think those are the kind of things that uh, I was more interested in asking her about. And uh, that's the kind of stuff that uh, I think would have been uh, useful if she had told a story about, like, hey, here's my life, here's what I do. And that's the only part I think was uh, that was kind of missing in that.
she has a very good sense of humor also she was able to add very subtle humor you know in many places and i i was really able to appreciate that uh, right her uh, uh, difficulty or whatever she is going through i think it was great of her to be able to smile at life and uh, say some uh, something oh it was very uplifting so wendy if you get a chance to watch our review you did a fantastic job keep doing more of these speeches i'd like to uh, see your recording of other topics and the way you bring your humor and your perspective of life i think it's the kind of message that other people need to hear so keep doing it and we're all rooting for you okay so we're going to move on to the the third segment and uh, so in this third segment we're going to review the speech that was recently given by Scott Cook. Uh, Scott Cook was the founder of a company called Intuit. I don't know if you guys know about this company in India. Uh, Intuit is a multi-billion dollar firm. They make these, uh, like a, they're, they're known for their, my dad actually uses uh, their, their software TurboTax. In this country we have to do tax every year. And uh, they, I think, uh, sell 50 million of these TurboTax software that people use to do their taxes. And then they have a business version of it that my dad uses to do other people's taxes. But they also have this accounting package called QuickBooks and other uh, sort of uh, products for small businesses. It's a very successful company. It's publicly traded. I think their market cap, I don't know uh, their, their market cap, but it must be at least 30, 40, 50 billion dollars. I don't know. So he was a founder. <laughs> And the speech was uh, given to the Harvard Business School students, uh, so it was a commencement speech. And so, so let's just take a look at the audience first. So the audience that he's talking to, he's a, he was a graduate of Harvard Business School in the, in the 70s, I believe. So his audience is a very specific audience. These are MBA students, MBA graduates. So he's talking to the MBA graduates, and the thing so you have to judge the speech on the audience that he's talking to. So the audience are the MBA uh, graduates. And what he does in this speech I thought was very interesting. He talks about, like remember, these are MBA from Harvard. That's considered very prestigious. So they are supposed to be, you know, know it all. And what he comes and tells them is that don't assume that. You don't know it all. That what I realized was that... Uh, that there are three, he gives them three advice, right? He starts out with some humor in the beginning uh, about uh, his starting a company, he never got any VC money and how he grew the company. And then he talks about three, three advice he, he wants to give to the students. The first one he says is that dig for feedback, that you need to get feedback. Don't think you know it all, you don't. So he wants the students to constantly be trying to get the feedback and assess it and see whether it makes sense but don't shut yourself out from getting feedback from others. He's just showing his vulnerability like hey even though you might get to a level that I've achieved at some point but I, here's what I've learned and he even talks about how he actually failed as a CEO. He actually stepped out of that position because he realized that he just wasn't equipped to be in that position. I thought that was very interesting that he's a here's a guy who's achieved so much is telling them hey but you know at some point you got to raise your hand and saying I'm just not the right person for this job then the second advice he gives is that just because you are a CEO it is important to have a coach Mo and this is something I can relate to because I do work with a lot of startups and one of the problems that I see with a lot of the startup CEOs is that they are very successful in starting a company, but then they think there's this, you know, this concept called the halo effect, that just because they started a company and they get all kinds of recognition, that they know everything about other things too, and they don't. And they don't go out and get any kind of coaching. So one of the things he's telling these graduate students is, hey, you're an MBA, okay, so you got an MBA from a very prestigious university and you may at some point get to be an executive, but remember, you still need a coach. The coaches are very important, just like top-notch athletes, whether they are cricket players or golfers or tennis players, they all need coaches. Coaches are very important to your success. And then the last thing he advice he gives to students is something he calls it 
savor surprises. And what he's saying is that a lot of times good ideas do not come from the CEOs. They come from customers. And sometimes they, those are the surprises that you have to be what, looking out for because those are the ones that actually can turn your business into real success. So these are the three, you know, three advice that he gives to these MBA students, which I thought, and I'm not even an MBA graduate, but when I was watching it, I saw this video a few times, and I said, there is so much in this video that he's giving these students. I hope they go and watch it a few times and other people watch it, because all this advice he gives is very useful, relevant, and actionable. So that's my overall feeling. And, and you know, it, this is not a kind of speech where you see a lot of theatrics or anything. He's basically talking like somebody who comes to you and says, uh, Somyan, can you give me some advice? You're successful, you know, you, you're now retired. What kind of advice would you give me so that I don't run into some of the problems? And it was almost like he's kind of like mentoring them, the way he kind of gives the speech. So that's the feeling I got. So Somyan, if you had a chance to view it, I'd like to find out what you thought of it. Exactly. Those uh, three uh, points that he mentioned were uh, very practical and they were from his personal experience he was talking. All the three were things that he had benefited from. All, all the three were things which uh, he did not embrace automatically, but then he, he, he was surprised later when, when he was you know, uh, brought to confront these situations and he felt that this uh, becomes uh, so significant. He, each one of them he has realized you know, by going through. In the first situation, when uh, uh, he was uh, looking for feedback, he said he was just not in the habit of asking for feedback at all. He was, in fact, scared of uh, seeking feedback. And the one occasion where apparently he did a, a PowerPoint presentation for six hours, okay, and you know, uh, and he thought he put his best foot forward and he made a six-hour presentation and things like that. And then in between, just for to provide a break, apparently he invited another person from IDEO the industrial design organization to give a 40 minute presentation okay to just to break the monotony etc and then continued with this presentation and after a month or so he was so proud of having made that kind of a long six hour presentation he went and asked for feedback for the first time i believe he in fact was expecting positive feedback because he thought he did exceedingly well then he found that after one month when people, when he asked for people as to what is their takeaway and what do they remember, 80% of the material that was remembered was from the 40 minute speech. And his six hour speech had such a low impact. So that was the biggest shock for him. So he took it for granted that he's, uh, uh, what he did was excellent and he is being appreciated. Whereas when he asked for the feedback, he realized. If he had not asked for the feedback, he would have remained, you know, uh, blind to that aspect. So that's what he was uh, trying to emphasize. In the case of the coach also, he said this coach was always there in the organization and many middle-level executives were the ones to whom he was uh, providing this kind of coaching. Then it seems at one point, you know, he said, why don't you do the same kind of thing, whatever you do for the other people, why don't you do it for me as well? And apparently this coach came and one of the earliest things he did was that he, he uh, uh, brought in a 360 degree evaluation of this guy, uh, you know, uh, from uh, different facets, peers and uh, uh, customers, suppliers, maybe employees and all kind of people. So he took a 360 degree feedback. And with that, when he confronted him, I mean, when the coach came to meet him, he was shocked that, you know, there is so much he didn't know as to how others feel about him. And that is one of the important eye openers for him to say that, look, I seem to have so many weaknesses. And what is interesting is the response he gave to that was also interesting. After this, he has gone to each and every one of those people who's supposed to have given a feedback and said, look, these are the things I have heard from this coach. These are the areas in which you know, I have realized I have got a weakness. These are the actions I'm going to take to overcome my weakness. And I'm now telling you that I'm going to be doing this. And if I'm slipping back on this, which I may, because I'm also a weak human. So please, I mean, uh, you know, give me a feedback. So he has gone and talked to each and every one of the people who gave the feedback and asked them to encourage them to go and give further feedback without any uh, hesitation. So that's the kind of uh, uh, atmosphere he has created. That was interesting. And the third dimension, again, I was quite surprised that, uh, you know, I also used to think that, you know, in accounting software, etc., 
you always look for that uh, double entry accounting everything has got accredited and debit and the client and you balance it all that okay so i have tried to handle accounting for a media chapter also for about one and a half years yeah i know how uh, maddening <laughs> this kind of double accounting etc and if you don't have a good clarity as to how these things are to be posted you can really go and mess up the whole thing and uh, uh, wonder uh, how to balance this uh, account book but then what was interesting was apparently he learned from some uh, small scale uh, person as to how he is doing accounting and that is how that uh, quick uh, notes or whatever it is was apparently uh, developed and he found that it was an unconventional way of accounting okay but then that is how one uh, small uh, entrepreneur was uh, handling his uh, task and then when he incorporated that nobody copied him he but then at the end of it silently he, the product sale was uh, hitting a, a kind of a very high and then uh, suddenly he became famous and his product that particular product accounts for 50% of his turnover that is amazing something which was unconventional that is where he went on to say that savor the, the surprise okay he heard from one customer a surprising thing he is not following conventional accounting practices at all he is trying to do accounting in his own way and uh, you know which was much simpler as far as the, that guy as an entrepreneur is concerned that is the simplest way and when he incorporated that simplicity in a software package that he was trying to offer the market lapped it up and it became a success that is interesting so i i think it is a very nice talk uh, he uh, he spoke uh, from personal experience and he brought in three well, just three points but all the three were very very uh, you know nicely uh, uh, explained points the only thing i felt was uh, he, initially i was thinking that he was being a little monotonous and think that right? he was not uh, doing much theatrics etc as you said maybe he could have uh, i mean uh, added a little bit more of this one but then he was very casual he was never pompous and think right he behaved like i am one, one more student like you so that's the way he uh, talked you know so uh, we are all on the same page kind of stuff yes like yeah no no i i i agree i i in, in the beginning i i because sometimes what happens is that the content of the speech was very important because the message that he was sending were real practical message that anybody could take away because a lot of these commencement speeches tend to be rah rah speech you are the future uh, you are the future of our you know mankind and all that and people don't really get much out of it where he was directly talking about his vast experience after at one time you know he was an, he got an MBA from Harvard too that hey you know i'm giving you all of this knowledge that you probably didn't get in the school <laughs> this is the real world stuff now okay all that stuff you learn about finance and marketing and all that that's all good but let me tell you what you really should have learned and i felt like i was getting an mba education by just watching that speech uh, that that they gave uh, so latish i would watch that speech because some of those ideas you might be able to incorporate uh, when you're talking because you said that a lot of the people that you're going to be talking to are in a leadership role and you can actually inject that said hey you know i just watched uh, scott cook uh, give a speech at harvard where he talks about giving feedback and i hope after this speech i can get the same kind of feedback from you so be vulnerable be vulnerable right in the beginning saying you know i was watching the speech by scott cook where he talks about how feedback is so important and i hope that i can get some valuable feedback from some of you uh, you know experts or so called so that way you kind of showing them that you know you're not just uh, you know it all you're also willing to improve yeah to be a founder and then you know go on to appoint one uh, one uh, ceo and then you know you go on to appreciate the ceo also apparently the ceo made one speech somewhere and then uh, uh, he came back uh, to ask scott hey, scott can you give me a feedback as to uh, you know how i spoke Uh, apparently scott uh, said ah oh, everything looked nice and you made a very good speech uh, um, I, i have nothing to uh, say as criticism there is no uh, great point i have to mention for improvement and so on so forth so that's a kind of uh, uh, expression he gave to uh, that ceo but then the next day the ceo apparently came back and said look i was uh, going through a video recording of my own speech and here are the a b c these are the points in which you know, i want to improve and i feel that i could have done better in this Well, he said, "See, look, it was great. I mean, Scott, uh, Scott agrees that yes, those are the three points where he could have uh, done better. But then here, look at this guy. He was able to analyze his own performance and then come with the pinpoint this one of saying these are the areas where I could improve. That means his his motivation to do self improvement was so high 
but he was able to correctly assess his own speech which many people will find it difficult you know so that's another interesting point that was there in the video i i think overall you know i am surprised that i am able to recall so many points from that video talk even though i just watched it just i once. I, i think you can give that whole speech somian huh i think you just gave the whole speech to us <laughs> I, mean, I think what this is saying that hey now i don't even have to watch it he just gave me the entire speech <laughs> I mean, that is the entire speech <laughs> but what is that what it made it memorable he made it memorable that was his skill that so, so, so in a way that speaks to how good the speech is. there's one thing you forgot that he mentioned so me now that you were you got the entire speech i'm going to pick on something you didn't get <laughs> <laughs> and, and and this is what he 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 actually sits on a board of uh, Procter and Gamble. You guys uh, know Procter and Gamble. That's like one of the largest uh, consumer yeah. packaged goods company. And the CEO of that company is someone by the name of A. G. Laffley. And what mm -hmm. A. G. Laffley told him was that that when you're a CEO, in order to be a successful CEO, you have to be a lifelong self learner. which Absolutely. i thought was a very good advice that once you become a ceo or, or any position but especially if you're a ceo you're constantly learning that is your number one skill you got to be able to learn and yeah. uh and and th again that's something that he picked up from uh from, from he quotes uh, ag laffley there so so i think there is a lot in there that speech that uh, you, you know latish i i strongly urge you to watch that and for anybody who's watching this uh please I'll provide the link to both the Wendy speech and also to Scott Cook speech and the Scott Cook speech was a publicly given speech and uh you know he's well, let's just face it he's not a newbie he's been giving speeches he's a CEO but even then there's a lot of things that you can take away just because you know he has more experience than us in giving speeches doesn't mean that there are a lot of things that we can't use in give in our own speeches so that's why I wanted to include that and and review it and see what are the things and i think the thing the key things i learned is how personable he was giving his personal stories to teach a business lesson and that's what i got out of that uh, that that speech absolutely okay so at this point uh, we're going to move to the closing thoughts and uh, then uh, close it out okay so uh, yeah. at, at this point uh, i'm just going to say thank you uh, latish and uh, somian for joining us and so I mean especially thanks a lot for leading the session on how to get started in giving a speech i thought that was very useful and uh, i i think uh, you know people watching this will be able to take away quite a bit like that's like i said we want to create this like an informal like a workshop where we both interact some things will agree some things will not but as, at the end this, this feedback that scott cook talks about is what this program is about is to give each other feedback and to get better yeah if people watch it on the uh, google plus um, uh, forum uh, and then uh, you know record their uh, comments below the video it will be a great uh, uh, great for us you know uh, it's always uh, uh, going to be limited in terms of how many people can be participating live because uh, different people are in different geographic locations and different time zones and things like that the timing may not be convenient for many people even though they may want to join etc but anyway i mean please uh, uh, post your comment and then uh, you try and join the, in the next week we will uh, continue on the same line okay let's closing thoughts uh, oh sorry uh, yeah um, actually i was not really prepared when i just uh, opened the link uh, so more or less it was more like an, i was intruding suddenly into the room uh, but um, I, i think i was uh, very fortunate fortunate that uh, i could do that and uh, absolutely it was uh, uh, the one hour that i spent uh, with uh, jay and uh, soumyan and uh, the lot of inputs that i have got from the conversation that we had the past one hour i'll definitely incorporate uh, in my uh, speech i mean the way i am going to prepare this 20 minutes of recording as well as uh, for the next week's uh, program definitely i'll try as much as possible to incorporate those uh, inputs So thanks a lot uh, to both of you, and I, I, I look forward to again, you know, uh, look forward to the future sessions also, wherein I'll be, you know, joining uh, all of you here. Right. So, so let this. Let me. Uh, 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 next, next, like, if you can record this speech and uh, uh, get it to us by, let's say, early next week, then you're welcome to come next week, and we can even give you an evaluation, a live evaluation. So. 
if you have time, yeah. I would just uh, I would just uh, do it. This kind of motivates you to do it because I'll tell you one thing: if you record your speech and send it to us, you will do a good job when you have to give it live because most people don't do that. Like Jay, it looks like uh, his uh, his speech is uh, going to be on 12th, which is a Friday, and uh, the next Friday, uh, we are going to have our uh, uh, you know the third uh, session of this uh, um, uh, speech talk live on uh, the next Wednesday, and that is on 12th, the same time, uh, 7 o'clock, 7 p.m. Indian time. Okay, so uh, maybe by that time you know you would have finished your uh, talk in the afternoon or something like that, probably. On, on yes. uh, next Friday. Yeah, right. So, so, so okay. we'll, we'll give you, we'll give you feedback by email, and then after you have given the speech, you can kind of then tell us uh, how it went. Yeah. And if is anybody going to be recording your speech? Sure. Somebody's going to be recording your speech live, the one that you're going to give live. Oh no, well, oh, no, that's that might be proprietary, right? So that may be more confidential. Yes. Okay. Okay. Forget about that. Just tell us how it went. Okay, then. Okay. Sure. Sure. All right then. Thanks again, and uh, we'll close it out. Bye, Latish. Okay. Bye. Good luck. Bye. 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 Thanks a lot. Bye. Thanks a lot, Jay and Sovian. Bye. Okay. Join us Bye. again. Okay. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye.